All right, guys, this is my second try on the video because the first time I had the wrong formula here, like an idiot. But here we go. Charles' law is the idea that volume and temperature are related to each other. As long as you expand, well, yeah, as long as you expand or heat the gas at a constant pressure. And what I mean is volume and temperature are directly proportional to each other. You'll see what I mean in a second. V1 over T1, initial volume over initial temperature, is the same as uh, second volume or final volume over final temperature. Here's an example. I've got this chamber. It's two liters and it's at 40 degrees Celsius. Now, I'm going to heat it to 100 degrees Celsius. Now, if the chamber stays at a constant pressure, it's going to have to expand. After all, pressure is how often and with what force the molecules are hitting the wall. And so if the temperature goes up, we need a more empty space for the molecules to be in to alleviate the pressure. In any case, I wanna confuse you with the semantics here. Let's just go with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. My initial volume is two liters. My initial temperature is 40 Celsius, but in Charles's law, you have to use temperature in Kelvin. To get your temperature in Kelvin, you add 273.15. I'm gonna be lazy here, just do 273. That gives me 313. Must be in Kelvin, cannot stress that enough. I'm looking for my final volume, my V2, and I need my second temperature, which is uh, 100 degrees Celsius. And again, I have to add 273 to that to get it in Kelvin, 373. Now I've just got to solve for V2. Well, to solve for V2, I'm gonna to wanna to undo dividing by 373. So that means I'm gonna multiply by 373 on the other side. Sweet, let's see what we can do here. Two times 373 divided by 313. 2.38 and my units for volume were liters apparently. Here's what I'd like to point out. The volume, oh wait, no, the temperature went up and the volume went up at the same time. That's what I mean by directly proportional. Let's try it again just to make sure you got this. Uh, let's use pink. A particular balloon takes up 750 milliliters at SATP. Now SATP is 25 degrees Celsius and about one atmosphere of pressure. What temperature should it be cooled to if the target volume is 600 milliliters? So I've been given my initial volume and my final volume, my initial temperature, and they're asking for the final temperature. So let's do this. We got V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. My initial volume was 750. My initial temperature was 25 plus 273, which gives me 298. My final volume apparently is 600 and I'm solving for the final temperature. Now this is less obvious about how we're gonna solve it algebraically. I'm gonna use cross multiplying because as a teacher, I find kids find cross multiplying easy. To cross multiply, you take the denominator of one side times the numerator of the other side and set it equal to the numerator of the original side times the denominator of the other. See, 298 times 600 equals 750 times T2. And then all I have to do to isolate for T2 is divide both sides by 750. It's a beautiful thing. 298 times 600 divided by 750 gives me a T2 of 238.4. Now that's in Kelvin, remember, because like I told you, you're always gonna do these things in Kelvin. To get it into Celsius, you subtract 273, technically 273.15. 
minus 273, negative 34.6 degrees Celsius. Ah, pretty cold. But then again, we started at room temperature and we wanted the volume to go down, so we needed the temperature to go down. Ah, Charles, you never cease to amaze me. You guys too, best of luck.